Hi everyone, my name is Effie Melissa and I'm the Head of Field and Lab Operations at Omicson. And I tend to go to a lot of labs to train people on uh, MGS for HLA typing using the holotype HLA. And very often one of the questions that, I, that a lot of people ask is what is the difference between qPCR versus qubit for library quantitation? So I figured we should create a little video to discuss all of this. So today we will be talking about do, should we do qPCR for library quantitation or should we do qubit for library quantitation? What is better? What is the difference? What should you use? The straight answer is that they're both the same. Well, they work differently, but essentially they give you the same kind of information. They both measure the concentration of your library and help you, and help you guide how much you dilute in order to load on the MySeq. The important thing to remember is that you always want to make sure that the concentration that you're measuring of your library is accurate enough in order to do an accurate dilution because if you overload the MySeq, it will end up in overclustering. If you underload the MySeq, it will, end start, it will end up in low cluster density, which means that you will not generate enough data for all of the samples and loci that you are, uh, that you are running. So it's very important to have an accurate measurement. So what's the difference? The qPCR is able to quantify the library using Illumina-specific uh, primers that are the, the kit rather that we use, the Kappa Biosystems kit, it uses Illumina-specific primers that are complementary to the Illumina-specific adapters that are already ligated on, your, on the uh, indexed um, libraries. So this way it is able to measure how much is the adapter ligated library, how much the adapter ligated material that you have in your sample. So it's a very, very accurate measurement. So when you dilute that down to a certain concentration, you know that you are diluting a very accurate measurement. So what's the difference with the qubit then? The qubit on the other hand, it uses a double-stranded DNA fluorescent dye which is pretty much a, an equivalent to a cyber green dye. What this means is that it intercalates to anything double-stranded in your sample. So it is able to measure anything that is double-stranded in your library. Is this an accurate measurement? It's not as accurate and as specific as the qPCR, but is that an incorrect measurement? Actually, it's not. And the reason why is because when you enter that value into the workbook, into the Excel workbook that we provide with the Holotype HLA um, kit, then you can actually uh, calculate very accurately what is the true, uh, the true amount of your library in, in your sample. In the workbook for this calculation, we actually use a standard curve in the background that shows you that, that has been created with more than 100 different libraries that have been quantified both with qPCR and qubit. So that helps remove any variability in this calculation. So it's very convenient that way. So what then, you're gonna tell me then which one should I, should I use? Well, you can use either one. The qubit will help you save time. The qPCR, however, is a bit more specific. The qPCR, I would say that it is more informative when you're in a troubleshooting mode. So if you have uh, figured out that something went wrong into the process, into your um, whole workflow, the qPCR can actually help you, give you more information to tell you what, where did things go wrong in a way. So it's a bit more informative. But for good high quality libraries, either one will do. So it's up to you, the choice is yours. If you wanna know more about it, feel free to contact us at supportatomicson.com or make sure you visit our website, omicson.com, and my holotype uh, registration area where you can actually find a lot more information. Thank you for watching. Bye.